Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, we are so excited that so many of you are following along as we build this new chicken moat uh, for our chickens and our ducks. We think it's an awesome project, a really fun way to be able to keep our chickens around the outside of our orchard while also keeping the deer from eating our orchard trees. There are so many of you that are curious about uh, several different things, lots of questions, great ideas, some things that are concerns. So we thought that we would kind of group them all together and address a lot of those for you today. So we're gonna to break today's video down into a couple different sections, I guess you could call it. The first thing we're gonna talk about is our hoop coop and some of the concerns that a lot of you have had about our hoop coop now that we've moved it into the orchard area. The hoop coop is where the chickens and the ducks currently live. Uh, that is where they lay their eggs, where they go at night to be safe. And we've just recently built a door on the back of it so that they can actually get out into the chicken moat area. The hoop coop itself was a really fun project that we did just about a year ago. It has a really simple construction. It's really just a couple cattle panels uh, with a plastic covering over it and a two by four frame. And the chickens and ducks have been living in a hoop coop for over a year. There are some concerns all along that we've heard from you guys and are still hearing them now that we've moved that hoop coop into the chicken moat and the orchard area. The first concern is about whether or not we need to anchor the hoop coop. A lot of you are very concerned that the hoop coop is going to blow over blow away in a big wind. Um, all I can say to that is we haven't had it anchored. Uh, we have no plans to anchor it. We get very strong winds here in the Ozarks. Uh, we get, you know, well, we haven't had tornadoes recently, but you know, we get tornadoes. We have very strong thunderstorms. It's very windy and that thing has never moved. Well, the bottom uh, line is that sucker's heavy. Right, it, it, it is super it heavy. Is so I even heavy. had a hard time moving it with my tractor. So yeah. um, that thing is, is not gonna go anywhere. I'm pretty confident of that, unless we get hit directly by a tornado right. and then we've got bigger problems uh, than just the hoop coop blowing away. So um, I'm not concerned about that, uh, but everybody needs to make that decision for themselves but I don't believe that that hoop coop is gonna blow away anytime soon. The other concern that we have quite often is about predators digging underneath it um, and whether that's been a problem or how we're preventing that. So far, we have not had any predators try to dig underneath it and it hasn't been protected by any kind of fencing prior to us moving it into the chicken moat and orchard area. We haven't had any uh, possum or skunks or raccoons try to dig in there. We don't really have mink or weasels around here, no. so we don't really need to worry about that. But I will tell you that we do have an idea for those of you who may be really concerned about that. And we tried this method for our dogs, okay? We uh, had some dogs that when they were out in their pen area, they would dig in the ground. Um, and it was, you know, holes are everywhere. We didn't really want that. So we really scalped the ground and we laid chicken wire down right on the ground so that when the grass grew up, you know, you couldn't even see the chicken wire anymore. But when the dogs would scratch on it, they wouldn't like the way it felt on their nails. It would hurt them, so they stopped digging. It worked really well in that situation. And we really think that that would be a good solution. Right, yeah. Like Sarah said, we've had no problems at all with anything trying to dig under uh, in the year that we've had it up. In fact, to be honest, we haven't had problems with things digging under anything here on the homestead. Uh, so I'm not concerned about that. We haven't had anything dig into the rabbit tractors, into our chicken tractors, or these hoop coops. So uh, while it could be a concern, uh, I think it's very low on the list. Uh, the few times we have found things inside of the hoop coop, it's been possums uh, inside the nest box, and they've simply walked right through the door while the door is still open. They come out pretty early in the evenings before we lock up the chickens. And so that's been the only time we've seen predators. And to be honest, they only want the eggs. They could care less about the chickens. Now, in addition to that, right now where it's placed uh, in the chicken moat, 
orchard area, we will be running two electric wires around the entire chicken moat area on the outside. Right. One is going to be very close to the ground, and then one will be right at the top, so that if any raccoons, possums, anything uh, get close enough to try to dig under, they'll be zapped. And right. if they are creative enough and try to go over, they'll get zapped that way. Right. But to be honest, we're doing that to protect the plants that we're growing inside. Right. Uh, not necessarily the chickens. So again, I think that is a very low thing on our list of, of worries. Um, I just don't think it's going to be a big deal. Now, the last uh, question and concern that we've been hearing a lot about that hoop coop is about the new chicken door that we had installed. And a lot of you are suggesting uh, maybe we should get one of those automatic solar uh, driven chicken doors that just goes up and down on a timer. Right. You know, we've thought about that in the past for other things around the homestead or the farm. And at the end of the day, uh, we just don't trust them for a couple reasons. One, uh, while the chickens tend to go in on a pretty regular basis, early in the evening, it's still fairly light out when the chickens go in for the night. But the ducks, the ducks will stay out till pretty much as long as you leave them out. Right. They'd uh, the, stay out all night if you let them. Right, especially on a warm night or a mm -hmm. rainy night. I mean, they love to be outside. So uh, the biggest fear with that, especially with the ducks, is that the door is going to shut, trap them outside, and they're going to have no way to get in or out away from predators if they need to. So uh, that is definitely a benefit to doing it by hand. The other thing is that, you know, part of living on a farm is being around your animals and spending time with your animals and making sure that everything is okay and safe. And I feel like if you start to rely too much on some of those automatic things and then you're not going out to check on your animals, uh, how many days could it be that maybe you wouldn't even notice there was a problem uh, before you, you know, go out there and all your chickens are dead or something like that. Right. So there, there also has been an occasion where, um, you know, an animal or not necessarily a predator, but in our case, possums have gotten into the chicken coops and have been eating eggs. And at the time that we go out there to close them up, we find them in there. Um, and so we also wouldn't want the possibility that one of those animals would get trapped inside with the chickens overnight because the automatic door closed with one of those animals in there. Right. Yeah. So again, that's one of those things that we've just chosen not to do. Maybe you guys have used it and have great success, but the, the biggest thing for us is the ducks. Uh, we certainly don't think it would be a good, good thing with the ducks. Right. Okay. The next round of questions is about the chicken moat itself or the fence, you know, part of the chicken moat area. We've had a lot of you express concerns about how are we going to keep smaller animals from getting through the chicken moat, not necessarily to attack the chickens, but to eat the plants and things that we plant inside. Well, the first part of that, again, is that we're going to run a hot wire along the outside at the top and the bottom, and that should help quite a bit with things like the raccoons and possums, possibly rabbits. The second part of that is that a lot of you specifically are concerned about rabbits and squirrels getting into the chicken moat. And all I can say about that is that, you know, we built the chicken moat to keep deer out. We didn't build it to keep every possible thing out. Uh, we know that there will be things that can get through, uh, and we have different ways that we're going to address those. Mainly the gardens, when we start gardening inside of there, we're just going to have to bring over our poultry netting that we currently use to go around our big vegetable garden. That has worked really well. We I've never seen squirrels go in there. No. Uh, occasionally a rabbit, but they don't seem to do a whole lot of damage. With the new orchard trees, we are going to be protecting them with some sort of, you know, plastic covering around them. And when we get to the point where we have berry bushes and things, I guess we're just going to have to cross that bridge when we get there if it becomes a problem. Now, you know, you can also say, what are we going to do about the birds on the fruit trees right. and the berry bushes? And that's just going to have to be something that we that we deal with if it becomes a problem. That's just kind of one of those what ifs that we're willing to deal with right now until it becomes a problem. The next kind of group of concerns that a lot of you have have to do with planting on the trellises that we just put in place. We had talked about planting vining plants that will grow up and create shade. Also a sense of protection for the chickens if they feel like they're, uh, you know, predators are after them, aerial predators. 
And we had shared that we are hoping to plant on the outside of that trellis, both outside the chicken moat and inside like the orchard area and stuff. And many of you are concerned about deer and other animals eating the plants that we plant on the outside of the trellis. And while, you know, I agree with you, there is a possibility that, hey, you know, we're putting up this big, you know, fence to keep deer out, you know, there's a just a possibility that those same deer are gonna come along and eat the things that we just planted on the outside. And there is that possibility. So for now, we're just gonna plant on both sides. If it only works out that the stuff on the inside survives, then we are really gonna enjoy the stuff that grows from the inside over those trellises. Right, and that leads us to kind of the last part of this video, and that is uh, you can't let the what ifs rule your life. Um, if we let the what ifs kind of rule our life, if we worried about every possible situation that could ever happen in everything that we did, uh, we would get absolutely nothing done. And to be honest, we would still be sitting behind a desk at our corporate jobs in the Phoenix area because we would have never had the guts to make the leap that we did to moving out to the country. We take a lot of risks, but you guys know that we do a lot of planning. So really, we take a lot of calculated risks, which for us, the rewards outweigh the risks. So a piece of advice to those of you who may still be in the planning stages of just, you know, starting a homestead, maybe you're already on your homestead, but you're just starting out. Uh, don't let those things, you know, bog you down to the point where you're so afraid to try anything because, uh, you know, maybe it'll fail. Um, some things are gonna work, some things aren't gonna work. As long as you do your research, have a well thought out plan, uh, for the most part, things are gonna work out just fine. And a lot of times things are gonna work out maybe a little different than you had planned, but in the end, it's still gonna be just fine. And you know, every you guys, every time you fail at something, you learn something, which will allow you to do it better the next time or have a different plan or a better plan next time. So you guys, we encourage you to try new things, even if it's scary. A lot of times, even most of the time, I would say, it works out to still being a fantastic plan. Right, yeah. So there's always that chance that we're gonna wake up tomorrow morning and the hoop coops have blown away or a, or a raccoon has, has, you know, chewed its way through, or I mean, a deer has jumped both fences and made it into the orchard, or a rabbit ate the cucumber plants that we had growing. But if we never did any of those things, we wouldn't be living our dream. We wouldn't be living the way that we want to live. We'd be living in the fear of all of that failure. And you guys, we just think that that's a terrible way to live. We don't encourage you to live that way. We think you need to get out, take some risks. Um, you know, if you need to replant your cucumbers three or four times, so be it. Replant your cucumbers three or four times. Or try next year. Or try next year, <laughs> or just come up with a different way to do it. Right. But you got to try something. You guys, we are so happy that you have joined us, I mean, on this big adventure, but also on these projects that we are doing as we're progressing on our homestead, on our farm. We just love having you along with us. We thank you so much. If you're enjoying our videos, we hope that you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. Don't forget that the absolute best way that you can help us is by sharing our videos on all of your social media. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.